Hi, I'm going to give you a short tutorial on how to open your PDF file that you started in Vectorworks. So the front elevations that you drafted of your set for Landon's Parade or the Mr. Green set, if that's what you did, you will take those PDFs, or those uh, front L's rather, and you have changed them into a PDF already because that's what you sent me uh, for, uh, for the assignment. Now we're going to take that same PDF and we're going to open it in Photoshop so that we can uh, then start painting our front elevations. And this is just a quick tutorial in case you, uh, you don't remember uh, what we did uh, in class the other day. So I'm going to open up Photoshop. Don't worry, this is uh, the uh, Mac OS version, but uh, on Windows it's very similar. It just uh, looks a little bit different, but your, uh, all the functions stay pretty much the same. So I'm going to go to the File menu. I'm going to click Open, and I'm just going to navigate to wherever that uh, wherever that uh, PDF file is. Uh, mine is called the Moonlight and Magnolias uh, sketch. I'm going to click open and give it just a second and uh, you're gonna get a dialog box that pops up that are particular to uh, PDF files that you don't always get uh, when you open up other documents. Uh, and you have this, if you remember this from the other day, uh, you want to make sure when you go to page options that you crop to the media box as opposed to cropping to the uh, 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 crop box or bleed box or any of the bounding box, any of the rest of that stuff. This uh, makes sure that you maintain the um, uh, proportions so that it stays in scale. Uh, so that's, pr that's pretty important. I've already made this, you see it's 11 by 8.5. Uh, I've already made this uh, a particular drawing in scale so that I could send it uh, pretty easily. Yours is probably going to say 18 by 24 uh, because it's an architectural C size drawing, so that's good. So click OK. And the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to get a transparent background. Uh, and you see it's called Layer 1 over here in your Layers, uh, layers menu. So the very first thing you want to do is go to the Layers menu, go down to Flatten Image, and allow it to flatten. So now you're going to get a background image uh, uh, a background layer that's locked so make a copy of that and you can either keep the background layer or you can uh, turn it off by clicking the little eyeball that's how you turn on and off the visibility uh, or you can delete it if that's the way you uh, the way you want to go and then after that you just start painting uh, and mine's got an awful lot of lines in it uh, you can start anywhere you want to if the walls were supposed to be some sort of green color I'm gonna pick it over here or obviously you know you can click on that and you are able to adjust to whatever color that you like I'm just gonna cancel that and with the uh, with the paint bucket actually I'm gonna I'm gonna pause there um, and I'm gonna back up because what we really want to do is for the areas where it is uh, a particular part of the paint elevation I would recommend making that a separate layer so I'm gonna select using the shift key and the magic wand I'm gonna select all the parts that are the walls in this drawing like that and I'm gonna zoom in and make sure I've got all these pieces that looks like that's a piece that needs to be part of it and so now that I have all that selected I'm gonna go up to the layer menu and choose new layer via copy and if you look down here, you see it's added a layer of just those options, uh, just that portion that I have selected. Now I'm going to come over here and double click, and I'm going to call that walls. Anytime you give yourself a new layer, make sure you uh, rename it. And now if I want to select just that portion, just that layer, you see it's highlighted in blue. I know that layer is selected, but the actual parts of the wall that I want to paint are not selected individually. So I'm going to uh, move my mouse over the layer thumbnail and on a Mac you hit command uh, on a uh, uh, on a PC you hit control control and click and it's going to automatically select uh, those uh, those parts of the layer. So now I can come in with my paintbrush I'm going to right click somewhere on my document give myself a certain paintbrush and I'm going to move out here to see about what size it is yeah, I like that a little bit better. Uh, and then you can start clicking, start painting in. That's kind of a pleasing color. You can see my opacity is set right around 64%. My flow is at about 65. 
which uh, looks pretty good. So I get a rather accurate color. Uh, however, it could be a little bit darker. This is only my taste. You can do it any way you want to. I'm going to do it a little darker right around the tops of the set because I like for the paint to fade out as it goes a little bit toward the top so that the eye of the audience is drawn down at eye level down here where the actors are so we can make it a little bit darker as it goes up to the top. Could I come back in later with my uh, with my dodge and burn tools and choose myself an appropriate appropriate uh, uh, paintbrush and darken it a little bit more? Absolutely. Maybe right around here, right around where people put their hands uh, it's even a little bit darker because it's smudged. So then you continue to go and you continue to um, uh, add stuff to it if you want to add wallpaper. Uh, remember, go out and find a document out on the internet, uh, a file that you like. Remember, if you have a selection made and you uh, want to paste it in, if you paste, it's going to just apply it as a new layer. If you want to actually put it inside where this is, almost like creating a mask, you go to edit and then paste into, which is not an option that's available right now, but if you paste into the document, uh, it allows you to uh, put it in and uh, it's uh, it'll hide it behind all those windows and all that other stuff. So, okay, uh, this has just been a quick tutorial about how to import your drawing in and start painting. Um, drop shadows, I think you know how to do that. Make yourself layers. Uh, and keep building those layers up. Doors I would make a layer, windows I'd make a layer, bookcases and bookshelves I'd make separate layers, molding and trim I always make that a separate layer. That way when I go back and I really want to start doing my highlight and shadows I can make sure everything looks nice in 3D. So I hope this helps a little bit and uh, I will see you guys next week. Okay, goodbye.